Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Borek, and this is going to be a preview to our Lehigh Valley Phantoms versus the Bridgeport Islanders game that is tonight that I'm going to be at as a fan, as well as taking some pictures and some shots for Flyers Nitty Gritty, but I'll be in the fan section rather than up in press row covering it for Nitty Gritty with the great Samantha Weismer, who all of you, obviously, many of you obviously know from Phantoms Row podcast, as well as when she did some stuff for Flyers Nitty Gritty. But, obviously, last evening was a good two periods after Max Wilman was able to score, assisted by Jackson Kate. Uh, Remy Ellie was able to score, assisted by Kopka and Dumont. And then we were also able to have a good play in the first couple periods where Felix Sandstrom also played well. And then, all of a sudden, it was a goose egg. Obviously, the biggest important moments of anything are the beginning and the end. You want to have a good start and you want to have a good finish. Well... They did not do that, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, yesterday. They had a good start, which is a great thing, and they've been more competitive of late, obviously, and I have to give that to the Phantoms. We have been more competitive of late. We're early in the season. It was really hard to watch the team at times. Where now we've been more in games, even in a 4-1 to loss, you wouldn't necessarily at the end of the day say, oh, well, they were really in the game, but they were, because the Phantoms, yes, they lost this game 4-1, to but they lost this game 4-1 to because they just laid a goose egg in the third period, where if you don't do that, then you're able to actually probably have a game that you get at least one point out of, and come out of Syracuse, and then have to travel through some inclement weather back, feeling pretty good about yourselves, where unfortunately coming in from that game, now you're kind of feeling off, because you had a very good two periods, but the closeout was really bad, so hopefully the Phantoms are able to just kind of throw that to the wayside, learn from it, mm -hmm. and then take what they did in the first two, where the shots were basically even. They beat us by a couple shots in each period, and then kind of learn from that and keep implementing that game plan, because I've always thought, even during his time here in Philly, as an assistant, Ian LaPerrier was best with the young guys and at developing the young guys, and at helping the young guys along the way in any way, whether it was talk, whether it was working with them in practice, whatever. And we've seen that a little bit this year in the Flyers organization, up with the Flyers, because some of the young guys ain't performing as well, where now the veterans are starting to do better. So it seems like the lack of him being there, your reef and I talked about it in the Nitty Gritty podcast, has an impact on that too, where in the Phantoms we're seeing young guys um, continue to perform pretty well, like the Zamoles of the World York, who is going to be out tonight due to going on the COVID list for those that do not know. But, um, like, you've seen those guys play well where the veterans are some guys we haven't seen mix in as well with Lappy. He's best at development. He's not the best structural coach all the time. But we're seeing the structure come, and we're seeing him learn and grow as time goes on, which obviously being a new coach and being new to the head coaching position, he didn't really worry about that jazz as much with the Flyers, where now he has to worry about it with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. And it's going to take time. But he's doing a good job of putting – the young guys in chances like Wilman and Frost and letting them continue to develop as well as Zamula and York because points are on everything. You just want them to be able to have confidence boosting on the ice like I thought Ruby had before getting injured. That's why it was unfortunate. He just can't catch a break. Hopefully he can come back either in this tilt or very soon. And then Jackson Cage continues to just play the good kind of like future fourth line center or whatever that just plays basically that. Um, I'm trying to think of like, someone to compare him to, like almost like miniature uh, Matt Cole and like Trevor Lewis, who's more of a winger, but like those types of game that just play really solid, get it done type of games, but it's never going to wow you in any aspect. So the Phantoms have a good lineup. They obviously have a good roster. They made a couple changes from last year and they have key injuries. But if this team can really pull it together, we saw them compete against a very competitive crunch team. Today they're playing a team in the Bridgeport Islanders that are right there with them and have not been impressive this season whatsoever thus far. And hopefully the Phantoms are going to be able to pounce on that and be able to take advantage because they have been better of late, being more competitive in games. Um, now at 3-4-2-1 and two and one, um, in the last 10, according to the Phantoms 3-6-5 app, they've been more competitive. Their goal differential is basically the same. Bridgeport has a, le has a worse one at minus one more at minus 17 to minus 16. Um, when it comes to goals for, they were able to score a little bit more, but they also have 63 goals against compared to our 56 goals against. 
So you can really take advantage of this team defensively, the Bridgeport Islanders, and also just take advantage of getting shots. The Phantoms, if they play a more simplistic game and get shots on um, either Schneider or Appleby or Skarik, whoever's in, Schneider's been struggling uh, whatever, when he was down there, or well, then Appleby has been good in his game. That's only been two, and then skarik has been good as well. But it's not really the goaltending. It's more they've been getting hung out to dry. Their defense leaves open opportunities. If the Phantoms can take advantage of the Islanders' defense leaving those open opportunities and just get to the spots on the ice and get to the right spots on the ice, yes, it's easier said than done without the Wizard Morgan Frost down. But you're able to figure it out. They did for two periods against the Syracuse Crunch team, who's better than the Bridgeport Islanders, as far as I'm concerned. So if you're able to play a game like you did against the first two periods yesterday, then you're able to win this game, as far as I'm concerned. You just got to push the pace a little bit more, play a little bit more simplistic. Don't do as much along the board stuff like you see the Flyers doing up there in the NHL too much, too. Try to just get the best shot you can get and then take it. You don't need the most prettiest shot all the time if there's an open lane enough let somebody deflect it like the Garrett Wilsons of the world or the Brendan Saunier's of the world and get the dirty but good goals so this has been a preview to the Phantoms of Bridgeport Islanders hope to see you guys there tonight have a great safe and pleasant day and go Phantoms peace out everybody